first got into high tanning, I was really into primitive skills and I was really into doing things in a very purist way. So when we talk about making a scraping tool, this was what I looked to at first. So this is a deer leg and in this deer leg, there is a bone that a scraping tool can be made out of. You'll see that this bone has a big bundle of tendons here that runs down the inside of the bone right here. So that, um, that bone ends up having a ridge right here and right here. And that ridge can be um, made more dramatic by taking a burin, which is actually a stone that has a chisel edge on it and running it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And that will expose two edges here and here that you can use for scraping a hide. So this bone hide scraper is really ineffective. It really doesn't work well at all and probably takes two to three times the amount of energy to scrape a hide effectively, as does one of these handy dandy metal scraping tools, which I like to make out of used planer blades. So if you want to struggle and be a purist, I recommend that you use one of these. If you want to be effective and have less work when the work is actually very strenuous, then I suggest that you make yourself one of these. So what you're doing is you're using a planer blade. So this is actually a planer blade that is for my planer because aside from hide tanning, I also do a lot of carpentry and a planer is very helpful. And so this has incredibly sharp edges. This is for a personal planer, whereas these blades are from more of an industrial planer. And so this, um, this planer blade has these, has these holes, which usually you won't have, but they wouldn't really um, be a problem. But it's sharpened on both sides. It's much more ideal for your purposes to find a planer blade that's just sharpened on one side. And the most ideal thing would be for you to find um, a wood shop that uses planer blades and see if you can get um, a deal on used planer blades from them because they'll sharpen them. The planer blades usually, industrial planer blades usually start this wide and then they sharpen them and sharpen them and sharpen them and eventually they get pretty narrow and they won't be super useful for their planer and they'll be likely to want to get rid of them. So if you can get in touch with a cabinet shop or um, a wood shop near you, they may um, have these used planer blades as a byproduct and you might be able to work something out where they save them for you. Um, but if you're not able to do that, you can just go to Lowe's and look for planer blades and look for something more like this than like this. When you get your planer blade, whether it be from the wood shop or whether it be um, straight from Lowe's, it will have an incredibly sharp blade. If you were to use a planer blade like this on your hide, first of all, it's sharpened on both sides so you'd be likely to cut your hand really badly with it. You'd also be likely to really cut into the hide. And so the first thing that I do when I'm preparing um, to make myself a scraping tool is I dull the edge of my blade. So this one I've actually already dulled some, but I'm gonna dull it a little more. And for this purpose, I can use this sharpening stone or I can use a rock to dull the edge. So in which case I'm gonna put this, so the if I was to sharpen this tool, I would mimic the angle that's on this tool, but we wanna dull the tool. So I'm using this angle. And you could put this in a vise that might make it a little easier, but. And you could start with the course. And so you're gonna first go all along the edge and you're gonna blunt that sharp edge. And then you're gonna go with your, um, with your finer stone and you're gonna kind of go in between the blunted edge and the acute edge and you're gonna use this 
to then kind of round the edge. And so I'm rounding it on the front and then I'm gonna round it on the back. It's a subtle thing. You don't wanna dull this tool too much. And you're really going to need to experiment a little bit with how much to dull because it really depends on your stroke with scraping. It depends on your strength. It depends on all sorts of things. Some people like to have one tool that they keep sharper for graining and another tool that's more dull that they use for flushing and for um, membraning. So it, it really depends. And sometimes I just for membraning use the back of the tool. So if you don't have a knife sharpener around, there are these things called rocks. And I don't know if you've noticed, but these two are pretty similar <laughs> in texture. And so I could just use this. And I could just run it like this um, and then come back and dull it. Okay, so that's the first step. We want to dull the blade. The second step is I want to create these handles. So there's two ways that um, I have commonly created handles. So I've seen a lot of people, and you can, you can order these um, already made up with handles from braintan.com if you want to. Um, they're a little more expensive, but sometimes that's worth it. So what you can do is you can take your used planer blade and you can get a little bit of hose. I believe this is some sort of radiator hose and you can flatten the hose and fit it on and that makes a handle. So some people really like this handle. I mean, it's, it's pretty slick. It looks nice and tidy. It looks tidier than these ones done with duct tape. Or the, this is actually gaffer's tape, which is better than duct tape. But the thing with this is as you are using it, it's likely that the handle is going to slide around. Also, some of these hoses have just kind of weird chemicals in them. I think they're phthalates. And it can then get onto your hand. And so this is not my preference, even though a lot of people like this and you might prefer this. But what I prefer to do is I take a rag and I figure out how wide I want my handle to be. So the duct tape is coming all the way to the ends, but I probably want to come in a little bit with my rag. So I want it right about there, which is probably half an inch wider than the point from like from this side of your palm to this side of your palm. So then we'll add half an inch. So I'm going to start this cut and then I don't know if you know how amazing woven material is, but once you start the cut, you can just rip it. Hooray. So then I'll take this and I'm going to wrap it around one of the sides of my pre-dulled blade. And I'm gonna come in just a little bit from the end of the blade because I want the tape to be able to make contact with the blade there. And it's nice to have a little bit of cushiness on your handle. And that's why this rag technique is really nice. And so I'm gonna see how much cush do I want. That's probably perfect. And this cushiness will help reduce the possibility of bruising on your hands as you're scraping. So yeah, I thought that this was going to be, well, yeah, that's probably perfect right there. So then I'm going to cut it. And again, the glory of woven material. And I'm going to put this in just a tiny bit. And then... This is my very special cheetah colored duct tape. If you're a person who has lots of tools, you might want to consider getting yourself a special, uh, special type of duct tape so you can tell your scraper tool from your friend's scraper tool so they don't get mixed up. So the cheetah duct tape, but we're gonna start with some regular duct tape on the part that won't show. Put that on end to kind of cap it and then I squeeze that down 
Never love that. And then I'm gonna overlap this duct tape by three eighths of an inch. <laughs> so that the duct tape is making contact with a blade and not just with the fabric or with the rag. And then I'm going to wrap this. So because we're going from an area that has is thinner to an area that's thicker, it's wanting to go at a diagonal, which is fine. We can go at a diagonal and then we'll just come back to get that last part. And so I'm gonna wrap it. Wrap it. I don't want to go past this end. And then <clears throat> I wrap it back. And I've had some issues with um, these blades. If these blades freeze, then sometimes the adhesive on the duct tape can denature. And that's why on this tool I use the gaffers tape. I found Gorilla tape to also work very well. But this tool I think is just going to be stored inside so it's not a problem to use my my special fancy duct tape. Okay. There we go. I'm going to do the other side. What do you think? Pretty nice, huh? <laughs> it's very comfortable on my hand. I have just the perfect amount of squish. If you have too much, um, too much, if you use too much rag, then you have another problem, which is that um, when you're scraping, some of your energy is going just into pushing down the rag, which is pretty silly. So you want to get just the perfect amount. Yeah, and like I said, you can make these yourself or you can uh, buy them from braintan.com or you can probably get on the internet and just search fleshing tool or fleshing knife and find different options. But from, from everything I've tried, I, I really prefer just making my own. And I think there's something to just the principle of making things for your for yourself that is probably resonant with you if you're learning wanting to learn how to make brain tan buckskin whether it's from a hide of a deer that you that you killed or whether it's a hide from some unknown deer that you picked up the hide of and the deer processor or whether it's a roadkill that you found and processed the meat and ate it all. It's all, if you're going to all this effort, I bet you really care about making things for yourself. even if it is out of duct tape and rags. 
Okay, cool. Now we're in business. Check it out.